Alrighty, so I believe this is actually the final match week we're going to have in MLS until the Leeds Cup begin. Obviously, you know, whether you like it or not, we're not going to have an MLS game until August because of the controversial Leeds Cup, which means that um, MLS decided that, you know what, if we're not going to have MLS action for at least a month time, let's throw in some very spicy ki kind of matchup this final match week before the Leeds Cup break because we definitely have some very interesting rivalry game that of course has happened and also uh my personal rivalry game is happening uh this week as well and we'll get to what what that means and and why I say that but let us start with the first one which is Atlanta United versus the Columbus Crew and by the way just like last week all these games are taking place between the busy uh, hours of 7.30 p.m. Eastern, 4.30 p.m. Pacific, all the way up to midnight, 30 p.m. Eastern, 9.30 p.m. Pacific. I do not like that that, of course, is the case, but I can kind of understand why why that is the case because everybody wants want to just get get uh, their games done before we he head into the Leeds Cup break and also the All-Star break, too, because the All-Star game is actually going to be uh, on Wednesday. State, but we start off with Atlanta United versus Columbus. Like I said, uh, Atlanta 6 7 and 11, whereas Columbus 12 7 and 3. Uh, this is the first of seven games that start at 7 30 p.m. Eastern, uh, 4 30 p.m. Pacific, and there's basically going to be at one, one point, uh, eight games that's going to be on at the same time. So when that happens, time to ground hop. Uh, all time meeting between Columbus and Atlanta, 10, 3, and 7. Remember, both of these teams met each other in the, the playoffs, and that was probably the most entertaining best of three playoff series we've seen out of all the best of three series. Uh, with Columbus, though, uh, they did play Atlanta in opening day. They won one nothing in that. But in that best of three series, it was a couple of 4-2 re resort first with Columbus winning the decisive 4-2 win against Atlanta. Then Atlanta did force game three to win 4-2 at home. Before Columbus did win the, the first game. And that first game was probably the, the dullest out of the, the three. With Columbus kind of dominate that game. And winning 2-0 against Atlanta. And then it was a 1-1 draw between both of these teams. And judging by the trajectory that both of these teams are right now. You know, Atlanta uh, once again struggling. Right now it seems like the Rob Valentino interim head coach uh, effect has really rubbed off this team in the last couple of games. And they're facing against a crew team that you know that they, they want to, to, to make amends of what happened on, on Wednesday. They're, they're probably very frustrated that they didn't get all three points at home, despite the fact that they were by far the better team against Charlotte, and we'll see whether or not they can do so, especially with the way that they have a very good good record uh, against Atlanta uh, on the road. And in general, they have a very good record this season on the road as well. Now, moving on, we got Miami versus the Chicago Fire. So I'll tell you uh, about uh, Lionel Messi uh, in three update in the News of the Week episode a little bit later. In fact, I'm going to do it after th this video. I usually don't do a News of the Week episode before uh, a match week. But I, I thought I wanted to throw it in there because, you know, the transfer window is officially open. And there's a lot of news that has happened in the past couple of days ever since the transfer window has opened. But uh, for Inter Miami, they're playing against Chicago. Miami is 15, 5, and 4, whereas Chicago is 6, 7, and 11. Chicago does have the all time meeting. And for whatever reason, Chicago has Miami's number. Uh, 4, 1, and 1 is the, the record that they had. And that includes last time when they won 4 1 against Inter Miami. And I know that was a, a game where they did not have, have Messi. But yeah, Chicago absolutely fumped Miami uh, in, in, in that one. And then they won 3 2 on the road against Inter Miami before. Uh, Chicago win 3-1 against Inter Miami. Then it was a nil-nil draw between both of these teams and in Miami winning 3-2 against the Chicago Fire. Now, the good news for Miami is the fact that, you know, if you're going to go according to the Chicago inconsistent pattern, which it feels like they're starting to follow uh, that narrative uh, again, they did get a big win um, uh, on on Wednesday against Cincinnati and a very unexpected win that that is. So you would assume that after they get a win, this probably is going to get either be a draw or or a, a loss. But, like I said, for whatever reason, Chicago has Miami's no, number and that. You know, I know Miami has been, been been doing well even with without Messi. And that kind of now makes the case that, yeah, they look like they could be the team that could win this four show. Especially with teams behind them are starting to stumble a little bit. Um, yeah, it'll be interesting to, to see whether, whether they can get their own, only their second win against Chicago. They have not beaten Chicago in the last five meeting and again of all team uh, I thought would do well against uh Inter Miami I didn't think the Chicago Fire would be but that that's kind of the hit story of the Chicago Fire in general where they're a team that just on, 
on some given day, they could be like the worst team in the league, and if you lose to a team that is just so bad, and then on a certain day, they can beat the best team in in the league, or at least one of the best, as what we saw in the last game uh, uh, against Cincinnati, taking down uh, the team that was in the Supporter Shield standing for, for a bit, and now Miami retake that position. Then we go to the Canadian Classic between Montreal versus Toronto FC. So how the table has turned in terms of coming into the Canadian Classic. In the last Canadian Classic, Toronto obviously has the momentum over Montreal. And they filled in. They won 5-1 in that game. Now it feels like it's reversed. It feels like Montreal is the one that has some, some momentum. While Toronto has just gone for a free fall. And, and our reality has smacked them hard in these last uh, month or two. Uh, with this long winless run. Uh, Montreal have a 6-9 and 9 record, whereas Toronto 8-13 and or 8-3 and, and 14. That is. Um all-time meeting uh is actually dead even at 22 wins for both of these teams and eight draws. And like I mentioned, last time both of these teams faced in the Canadian Classic, it was not close whatsoever. It was Toronto winning 5-1 against Montreal. Before it was a 3-2 road win that Montreal against Toronto, then Montreal winning 2-0 against Toronto. Then uh, Montreal won 4-3 on the road against Toronto before it was a 1-0 home win that Montreal has against Toronto FC. So again, despite the 5-1 uh, thrashing, Montreal still has the be better uh, in terms of the last five head-to-head head advantage. And they know they want revenge uh, over TFC. I mean, it's not just because this is this is a big rivalry and it means a lot for Montreal fans to beat Toronto, but also the, the fact that after that 5-1 shellacking that, that they take, you know they, they want to do something similar uh in in this game and who knows we'll see whether or not if that is the case again there really seems to be a lot of high scoring affair in this canadian classic i mean you look at the last three out of the four meeting it feature more than five five goals or at five goals uh between both of these teams so it could be the the case again and we'll see how this latest chapter of canadian classic will write itself oh by the way that that's not the only rivalry we're gonna ha have i mean this we, you might as well just call this the mini Heineken rivalry week with the way that we definitely have some more big rivalry that is com coming up as well. Now, moving on, we got New England versus FC Dallas. Uh, New England 7-1 and 14, whereas Dallas is 8-5 and 11. All-time meeting. It's hard to believe that both of these teams, knowing that they came into the league both in 1996 and are part of the original 10 teams that came into the inaugural season. But there's only been four draws between both of these teams. Uh, New England leads... The all-time meeting, 24-4-20. Although, you know, last time both of these teams played was back in 2022 uh, when New England won 1-0 against Dallas. Then Dallas won 2-1 against the Revs. Then we had one of the four rare draws that we have this this series with a 1-1 draw in this game. Then Dallas winning uh, 1-0 on the road against New England. And then Dallas winning 2-1 against the New England Revolution. Now, obviously, Dallas has definitely played uh, much better lately. Though, again, a part of that is because they, they, they've been playing very well when they're playing at home on the road it's still kind of the same story for this dallas team they, they've never been a, a good road team and this season is the same case and they're facing against a new england team that yeah you know they they have a lot of injuries that they have to deal with but obviously i i i, I know that that if you're a Rams fan you are hoping that that things would start to turn around because all of a sudden caleb porter's seat is starting to get hot again again you remember how, how he, he rattled that four win uh, in a row, and his seat has has really cooled off after that. It is now hot again with the way that they're now back dead dead last in the East. Though, as I mentioned before, the East is just so competitive in terms of the the, the playoffs. Much more competitive compared to the West because there's only a five point gap separating the team at the bottom all the way to ninth position. So New England isn't really out of it, but again, they're gonna have to try try to trickle this this injury uh bug that they they've been been have to deal with the uh, the last last game or so and we'll see whether they can do do so against the Dallas team that is definitely playing much better but again have still have their struggle on the road then we go to the next one which is the New York Red Bulls versus FC Cincinnati so this was a matchup we saw in the best of three series last, last uh year although unlike the Atlanta versus Columbus game this is not this game did not go to game three since that he won that best of three series and they also have the better record here 15 free and six although as we we've seen since that he had a nightmare last two two games it's been a bit of a, a huge fall from grace ever since that 6-1 beat uh beaten that they they uh give gave uh inter miami at home whereas the red bulls 9 11 and 4 is their their record all-time meeting 5 5 and 7 in favor of the red bulls Last five head to head matchup, it was the Red Bulls winning 2 1 on the road against Cincinnati before it was a 1 1 draw between both of these teams. Then Cincinnati winning 3 0 against the Red Bulls before the Red Bulls won 2 1 against Cincinnati. And then the Cincinnati winning 2 1 against the New York Red Bulls. So this should be an interesting one. Again, 
you know, the Ripples, they've been playing well. But as I mentioned before, the biggest problem for, for them is the fact that that finishing is just not there uh, for this team. And part of that maybe is due to the fact that they they miss Emil Frostberg. But Frostberg is more more of a creative player. They, they, they just simply don't have guys on this team that, that, that have shown their clinical finishing. And they're going to have to do it. So in this game against Cincinnati, you know Pat Nolan's Nolan team is going to want to to, to get some redemption in this one. By the way, speaking of Pat Nolan, he's not going to be available in this game. Uh, he, he, of course, have to serve that suspension that he had after got a, getting a red card uh, in the, the last game against the, the Fire. But there's no doubt that this Cincinnati team, they want to bounce back. They they hope that this, this recent turn of bad form is just a blip. You know, we usually see that happen with every good team. Every good team usually go through a bit, a bit uh, of a down, downwards, downward period. But you don't want that to... to, to escalate into a bit of a, a winless run and that's what Cincinnati is trying not to do so and not to mention it feels like this season they play better on the road compared to when they're playing at home a lot of their losses this this season at home has been at TQL Stadium but on the road they have been flawless and we'll see whether or not if they can uh, do so in this game as well and assuming that they're probably going to get Lucho Costa back in in this team I mean it's crazy that there was a crazy record saying that that Cincinnati have lost lost every, every single game except for one when Lucho Acosta is, is not on this team. So if Lucho Acosta is not available in this game, then it gets a little bit bit, bit interesting in this one that the Red Bulls could take advantage of getting all three points. Now, moving on, we got Orlando versus NYCFC. So Orlando 9-6-9, and nine, whereas NYCFC 11-4-9. All-time meeting 9-9-7 nine, nine, and seven in favor of NYCFC. Last five head-to-head -head matchup, it was NYCFC winning 4-2 against Orlando City. In fact, that that actually happened uh, not long long uh, ago, too. Uh, it happened just a couple of weeks ago before NYCFC did win 2 nothing against Orlando. Then it was a 1-1 draw between both of these teams before NYCFC winning 2-1 against Orlando and then Orlando winning 2-1 against NYCFC. And, you know, I, I think that, that Orlando is going to be fa favorites coming into this one, mainly because they're now becoming one of the hottest teams in the Eastern Conference. It feels like they, they finally have figured it out. Oscar Pereira has finally figured the the, the, the right tactics and the, the right players in the, the lineup to really propel them. But I also think that, that the other key success for Orlando lately is because they can score goals now. Because that, that was one of the big issues that they've been, been, been facing, especially at home. But now, lately, they have been on fire when it comes to their goal scoring uh, Fred and they get a chance to get a win against an NYCFC team that, although they do have still have a respectable record, this is a team that is struck, still still struggling uh, playing on the the road. They're definitely not as a good of a road team compared to when they're playing at home, which kind of sounds about right because that's kind of the narrative we've seen with NYCFC before, where they're they're definitely a better home team compared when they're on the road because they play at a baseball stadium, and we know how much of an advantage that that is when you play on a baseball stadium and on a field that is. Is obviously, I hope we're, that's going to be the last that we're going to see. And we're going to see the last of, of, of the team playing at a baseball stadium, probably starting in 2026 when NYCFC get their own stadium. Now, moving on, we got the Philadelphia Union versus Nashville. So Philly, you know, again, you're welcome in terms of me making a video about their bad run and instantly they're able to, to get themselves back on winning track. And they have a chance to do so again against a Nashville team that is in an absolute free fall. In these last couple of games. I mean these last couple of games. You want to talk about a team that has dealing with the roughest patch in the last three games. I mean you could argue Minnesota probably is one of those teams. And Toronto may have a word with that as well. But Nashville. Man these last three games. It's been nothing but mi misery for this team. And it doesn't get easier uh, now that they have to go on the road again. And even though they're playing against a struggling Union team. It feels like maybe that 5-1 win the Union has uh, in the last game. Might have, might have started a spark. Uh, for for them, but overall the record for both teams is not good. Five nine and ten is the record for the Union, whereas for Nashville six eight and ten is the record. Um, all time meeting three three and one in favor of the the Union. Uh, last five head to head matchup it was a two one win that the Union had against Nashville before it was a nil nil draw, and then a two nil nil road win that the Union had against Nashville before it was a one one draw between both of these teams, and then another one one draw before. Uh, both of or between both of these teams. So yeah, the Union has definitely got the better over Nashville, and judging by recent form, it seems like that could be the case uh, 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 again. Where yeah, again, the Union they can have a chance to finish uh, uh, strong uh, this season, and they have to because they know 
that that once League Cup is is, is over, they got a really tough schedule in September. I've even mentioned that they're going to be facing against some of the best team in the league. If they want to really find a spark and try to get them themselves into the playoffs, which is still a possibility, because as I said, the East is very tight when you look at the 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 standing near the near the the bottom. All they need to win this game because once they do play against those good teams, yeah, it's going to be a really big test. Te test to see whether they can stay in the playoff race. I still think that this main core that they have is going to be torn down uh, this offseason, whether they make playoffs or or, or, or not. Uh, but, yeah, you know, at least it, it's a glimmer of hope, at least in the last game, that they played so much better and that they finally stopped the, the bleeding uh, in terms of the, that endless uh, free fall that they had uh, for, for pretty much half of the, the season. As I mentioned, they've only won two out of the last 18 after uh, before that game game uh where they they won 5-1 uh against the new england revolution now moving on into the last game on this board and the only game that does not start at 7 30 p.m eastern 4 30 p.m pacific in fact this is the first of three games that start at 8 30 p.m eastern 5 30 p.m pacific is austin and charlotte so austin 8 6 and 10 whereas charlotte is 10 6 and 8 and both of these teams only met each other once austin won that meeting they won one nothing on the road against charlotte though i have a feeling this time charlotte would not only want revenge but also i don't like charlotte might be the better to me into this game i mean what a week it's been for for the charlotte fc team a team that you know had a, a murderous row of going to 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 face against two ohio team back to back on the road and you know uh, I, I think nobody would feel ashamed the fact that they didn't get anything out of those those games but not only the fact that they got something out of those games they got four points against those uh, two two teams. I mean, you know, Charlotte is definitely a real deal right now, and and you know, for Austin, unless if they rely on some devil magic and and rely on on, on how expectancy go 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 kind of got against them, but they somehow win a game. Yeah, something tells me Charlotte will be heavy favorites coming into this game, and they're they're definitely licking their chops of getting another another road win against an Austin team that has been very mediocre uh, this season. But that being said, uh, forget about. Not stopping the video and changing the board. Let's do it right away. Why not? Um, obviously, I've done this many, many times before. Also, for those of you wondering why I have like a paper next to my nose so so much, uh, I've been battling allergies for the, for the past uh, past day or or two. So that's why I have this paper next to my nose because my nose is just really itchy right now. But that being said, uh, moving on, and now we're gonna get into some some very very tasty kind of matchup because if you thought the 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 first board that there's some tasty kind of matchup, now we get to some of the rivalry games. So we start off with Sporting KC versus St. Louis, and again, you know this rivalry there there's been some really good good battle between both uh, of these teams and, and really highly intense uh, games, especially uh, last year in the the playoffs as well. But unfortunately, this one is probably one that. Yeah, it's probably kind of the, the, the lowest stake out of all these all these games between both of these these two Midwestern teams because both of these, these teams are not doing very well. Uh Sporting KC 6-5 and 14, whereas for St. Louis, 4-10 and 10. Uh Sporting KC, I think they now if I'm not mistaken, they probably have now now uh, uh just a little bit better record over, over uh St. St. Louis uh in terms of point total. I, I might be, be be wrong though, and St. Louis fans gonna yell at me. Uh, because they, they'll prove me in the standings, but uh, but one thing for sure is that Sporting KC have now got more wins than St. Louis ha has had. But uh, in terms of all-time meaning, three one and two in favor of SKC again last year in the the playoffs. It didn't go three game games though. Uh, they uh, la last year in the playoffs, uh, it was Sporting KC sweeping both of the game first, winning four one on the road against St. Louis, then winning two one uh, at home against St. Louis. But the last time both of these teams played against each other, man, it was a it was a very very fiery game. It was a free free draw in that game. It was a game where it kind of started the narrative of Sporting KC blowing games late left and, and right with them giving up a late goal against St. Louis. Uh, but then St. Louis did win 4-1 against Sporting KC before Sporting KC winning 2-1 against St. Louis City. So again, you know, in a matchup that, you know, there's not really much to, to play for because I, I think both of these teams, they're not going to make the playoffs. I mean, you look at, at, at how, how far they, they are. Uh, from the standings and with the way that they've been so inconsistent and even if st louis is going to get that injective of li life uh when it comes to some of the signings that they had because you know it seems like that could be be a thing that we'll, we'll see with this team i think they're, they're just way too far away from from the playoffs and the injuries that they've been dealing with and all the players that that's been missing in this team it's going to be a mountain for this team to try to get themselves back to playoff contention but if they're going to do so 
they're gonna have to win this game against Sporting K KC again. This is an SKC team, another team that I don't think it's gonna they're gonna make the playoffs. Every time when they get a big big win, it looked like it's a turning point, and then they they lose in the last game uh, uh, again uh, against Van Vancouver. So again, I I think both of these teams, of course, are not gonna make the playoffs. But one thing that both of these these teams don't care is the fact that yeah, this is gonna give it all their best because it is a rivalry game. It is starting to become one of the more intense rivalries, especially last year where it really intensified with them them making into the playoffs now moving on uh speaking of a a, a game that you know used to be kind of good well actually i wouldn't say minnesota versus san jose has always been a a a, a, a good good rivalry i would say that that's kind of like my personal rivalry because you know these are two of my team facing off against each other and i usually call this the blues not derby but i i think for this one i'm gonna call this the dumpster fire derby because you know both of these these teams have not been great what whatsoever i've been been really just been curious when it comes to this season with both of my team not doing uh very very well remember i had a spell where where for a month my team neither of my team were able to to, to win win a game and the good thing about this is that when the when both of these teams face off against each other and they're not doing good i mean at the end i don't really care uh what happened a, a, after this and i can actually sort of enjoy enjoy the, this game the fact that yeah at least one of my team is gonna get get a big win but i don't know if that's gonna change change anything and I, as i also said before i feel like this matchup is very similar to what i said about the 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 portland timbers versus sporting kc matchup a couple of months ago where it's between two teams that just can't hold on to to lead so when we get to to the last 15 minutes of the game you better believe both of these teams are going to be sweating sweating and hope that yeah they're not they, they might be the they don't want to be the one that give up uh, of the the lead and lose the game and somebody tells me it's gonna it's gonna happen it, it, one of these teams is gonna find a way to to, to give up the late leads and, and and lose in 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 painful fashion but minnesota has an 8 6 and 10 record whereas the quakes 4 2 and 18 yeah it is an ugly record that the quakes of course has had 6 4 and 5 in favor of the quakes uh last five head to head meeting it was a pair of 1 1 draw between both of these teams before the quakes did win 2 nothing against minnesota minnesota then win 1 nothing against the quakes and then it was a 1 1 draw between both of these teams and what also doesn't help is the fact that there's been a, been a, a lot of draws in in the the last couple of meeting in between my personal derby and if this game goes into the draw it does not help me whatsoever um i mean if i really ha have a rooting interest between both of my teams I would love to see Minnesota win win because I do think that in terms of both of these teams, who I think has has the better chance to still um, make it to the playoffs, it's obviously Minnesota. I mean, it's not even close. The Quakes are done since they 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 won, and that you know that loss that they had against DC that that one hurts with the way way that it feels like maybe things were going to turn around, and we'll see whether this can do so. I mean, again, you know, I, I do think that Minnesota, like a lot of these bad teams. If you're going to 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 uh, have a bad season or your 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 things are not going well in 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 the league, then uh, you 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 want to also so take take the Leeds Cup seriously, and I, I'll see how Minnesota will take the Leeds Cup seriously. I mean, because last year they they actually did very well in the Leeds Cup; they made it all the way to the the quarter uh, final. But you know, we'll see whether or not not uh, will they do do well in that tournament. Though again, if they want it to. to so you get a good good start in terms of them potentially do well in that tournament. Get a win against the San Jose Quakes. Now, moving on, we got the Rocky Mountain Cup, and this is more like it in, in terms of a ri rivalry matchup that actually has some high stake in between really two good good team. Uh because the Rapids 11, 5, and 9, whereas RSL is 12, 8, and 4. Uh all-time meeting, 30, 13, and 16 in favor of RSL. And the last five head to head meeting, I mean, there's a reason why last five when both of these teams face against each other, I, I've said that I cannot wait for the next Rocky Mountain Cup because man, that that turns out to be one of the best games of the season, if not the game of the year. Five free win that RSL had against Colorado. That game was just back and forth and back and forth uh throughout the full 90 minutes. Then it was a 2-1 road win that Colorado had against RSL before uh, RSL did win one nothing against the Rapids before RSL winning 2 nothing against Colorado and then Colorado winning 3-2 against RSL. And by the way, this is also the final meeting in the Rocky Mountain Cup unless, of course, they may meet each other in the playoffs, which if that's the case, I won't mind that that, that would be the case, especially if it's a best of three uh, series. So, yeah, a, a trophy is kind of kind up for grabs for both uh, 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 of this team these team as well and i expect it should be a, be a very entertaining game and don't be surprised it could be high scoring again because both of these attack has been really really good 
uh uh this this season and if we're gonna get just a little bit of uh, uh just a little bit of what we saw in that five free win i don't think this is gonna be an, an entertaining game now moving on into the 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 next game and now we're getting getting to the west coast game that start late at 10 30 p.m eastern 7 30 p.m pacific is a game between Seattle versus LAFC. And by the way, there's actually two games that's going to be nationally televised on Fox. Uh, one of them is Austin versus Charlotte, which feels like a weird game for them to, to make it get national televised. But the other one is the Galaxy versus the Portland Timbers. I'm kind of surprised this game didn't get nationally televised by FS1, but I'll get to talk about maybe I can understand why they decided to pick this game as the national televised game. Uh, but... Seattle versus LAFC, again, anytime when both of these teams met, you know it's going to be a, a good game, and you know it's going to be kind of like a playoff kind, kind of field game. We saw it, too, in the first game of the season between both of these teams. It, it really felt like a playoff game, and it could be the case, again, because Seattle has definitely picked up their act in these last couple of games. They're, they're, they're one of the hottest teams right now in the Western Conference against an, an LAFC team that has definitely cooled off in these last couple of, of games after they were they themselves were, were the hottest team not only in the west but pretty much in the league itself uh 13 5 and 5 is lafc record whereas for seattle 10 7 and 7 uh 10 4 and 5 is the all-time record in favor of lafc and the last five head to head matchup it was a 2-1 win that lafc had against seattle in the the home opener for lafc before lafc winning one nothing on the road against seattle then one nothing win that lafc had against the sounders before it was a new new draw between both of these teams and then LAFC winning 2-1 against the Seattle Sounders. So the Sounders has had, had their issue against LAFC. They had, haven't really figured out how LAFC, at least in the, the last five games. But the good news with Seattle is that they're at home in, in this game. Their home form has definitely been much better uh, lately. And that, again, I would say say that this will ha have a playoff kind of feel. And I would also say that if you expect that there's going to be a lot of goals that could be scored, I don't think this is a game to do so. And maybe this is why... It kind of plays into the reason where I'll mention why this game was picked uh, on FS1 instead of, of this one. But nevertheless, I still think this is going to be a very competitive game. It's going to have that playoff uh, feel. And again, I wouldn't be surprised both of these teams would meet each other in the playoffs again. They meet it in the playoffs like almost every single year. And that included last year too with LAFC squeezing a one nothing road win against Seattle. So yeah, it could be a, a, a playoff preview once it, once again, uh, in, in in this one, and as I said before, anytime we Seattle play against LAFC, you know it's going to be a good game. Then we go to uh, the next one, which is Vancouver versus the Houston Dynamo, and unfortunately, just like what I said about, about Sporting KC versus the, the Quakes, a game that is sandwiched between two really good games in the West Coast, um, and nobody's going to watch. Yeah, this is probably going to be the one to do, do so, though I would say it's kind of a little underrated, unlike when I said the Sporting KC versus the Quakes are between two uh, garbage teams. This is between two teams that are, are in the, the playoff position and actually are playing very well this season. I mean, the Whitecaps, uh, they're, again, they're kind of like Charlotte where they're kind of flying under the radar and now all of a sudden they're starting to be be good again with an 11-5-7 record, whereas the Dynamo, 9-7-7 seven, seven is the record. All-time meeting, 10-5-8 in favor of the Dynamo. Uh, last five head-to-head -head matchup, Houston absolutely destroyed Vancouver last time. It was a 4-1 win that they had against Vancouver, and it was kind of maybe a, a little bit of a retribution after they got themselves destroyed last time at BC plays uh, with Vancouver winning 6-2 against the Dynamo. Then it was a 2-1 win that Vancouver has against Houston. Then Houston returned the favor by winning 2-1 against Vancouver, then it was a no-no draw between both of these teams. So if you see the pattern, uh, knowing that that is the case, it feels like this might be a win that the the, the, the Whitecaps are probably going to get a revenge against Houston and probably going to get a big win, but it's not going to be easy because the Dynamo this season, they've been very good this season on the road. They're a very tough team to to, to face and always uh, have that never-say-die attitude when they're on the road, but it'll be, be very very tested against the Whitecaps team that all of a sudden have found life and started to look like the Whitecaps we saw in the beginning of the season, which in the beginning of the season, I, I understand why a lot of team weren't, weren't really giving the Whitecaps credit because they had an easy, easy ske schedule and they got found out once they play against tough teams. But now they're playing against tough teams and able to get, get wins against tough teams and to give, give them some, some credit uh, as well. And then finally, we go to the national televised game between the Galaxy versus the Portland Timbers. So this game obviously will be kicking off a little bit later because, of course, it's on FS1. And the real reason why I think this game got picked over in this one is entertainment factor. Entertainment factor, you know, this game will be entertaining, but it won't be as entertaining as what we'll see with a Galaxy versus Tim Timbers game. Because you know, whenever there's a Galaxy game, 
you know there's going to be a ton of goals, and especially with the way that both of these teams can are, are very good on the attacking end, and both of these these teams are uh, a little bit suspect in the defensive so the front. Do not be surprised this game is going to end 4-3 or even 5-2. And there's been a history between the Galaxy and the Timbers where these games can just... The, the score line, line would, would just go absolutely berserk, and it feels like this could be one of those games as well. Uh, the Galaxy 13, 7, and 5, whereas the Timbers 10, 6, and 8. And not to mention, you know, this is also a matchup between two teams that have been in really good form. I mean, the Galaxy are now leading the Western Conference, whereas the Timbers have really revitalized themselves and on a good good run of themselves. Uh, all time meeting 14, 9, and 13 in favor of the Galaxy. Last five head to head matchup. I mean, last time both of these teams faced off against each other, it was a free free draw. Between both of these teams. And something tells me we could see something similar to that. And it was a 0-0 draw between both of these teams. Then a 1-1 draw between both of these teams. And then the Galaxy win 3-1 against the Timbers. And then the Galaxy winning 2-1 against the Timbers. And before you ask. I, I guarantee you now now that I, I, I hyped up this game. And say that there's going to be a lot of goals. And now I'll watch how this game is going to end 0-0. And this one somehow will end like 4-3 and stuff like that. Because that's how, how it works sometime in MLS. Where I jinx something and, and the reverse thing happened. But I do truly believe there's going to be goals in this one. And again, in terms of entertaining fa factor, I think with the way that both of these, how both of these teams play compared to how both of these teams play in this game, this game has more of an entertaining factor. You know, I, I, even if there's not going to be goals in, in in this game, I do think that there's still going to be a lot of chances that is created because that's how both of these teams play. They love to be very direct on on the attack, and you know, for for a casual MLS fan, they would rather see that than than good defense. I mean, I, I know. The old saying goes that the fat thing is is a loss of art, and some people don't like to see a game that that is very tight and and, and defensively, and that's under understandable because it can be dull to see. They want to see a fast action kind kind of game with just tons of goals and at times no defense whatsoever. Well, if that's the case, then I think that's why like the the fox uh people decided that yeah we're gonna choose this game game because we know that it's gonna guarantee some some highly entertaining and high octane kind of action compared to this game between the Sounders and LAFC. But there you have it. That is pretty much it in terms of looking at all of these uh, 14 games. Like I said, this is the last preview that I'm going to be doing before the season resume in August. And if you guys enjoyed this review, let me know in the comments below. And also let me know in the comments below your prediction for these last 14 game games before we head into the Leeds Cup break. But yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you do, make sure you guys leave a like, smash the subscribe button. And yeah, I, of course, will see you guys next time.